Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're taking a look at Marceau. This is the Tier 10 French DD. This is uh, similar to the Kleber, but it has some traits that are different. I'm going to talk about the traits that are different, show off a game, talk about my build and how I would have changed it knowing all of the traits. So the Marceau, is, it's a Kleber hull with uh, different guns, different torpedoes, and a different consumable loadout. So the guns are 127 millimeter guns. Uh, there are eight of them on four gun turrets. We have the torpedo system, which is a nine kilometer variant that moves slightly slower than the eight kilometers that you see on the Kleber. But there are benefits to that as well. Nine kilometers is a much easier proposition than the eight kilometers at 7.8 kilometers for the detection of the ship. Uh, I am one of those players that still believes strongly in the concealment of my DD. You know, that's one of the traits the DDs have over every other ship and it allows them to do a lot of things. It allows them to take objectives, keep people spotted, uh, drop off, or do whatever you want to maintain control over the situation. You have the ability to dictate it because of that concealment. So 7.8, same exact concealment as the bear. Longer range torpedoes though, don't really feel the um, unfairness when it comes to the torpedo range to the concealment range. Uh, but you'll notice that in order to have this equipment, you gotta give up a really big thing. And French giving up main battery reload is like a sin, I, I think. It is a really big deal that the French, particularly the Marceau, does not have main battery reload. It, it, you definitely miss it for assassination plays. Uh, yes, it's 127 millimeter guns, and it's eight of them, but they just don't do the kind of chunk damage that the 139s do. Uh, and obviously the reload time would dictate and suggest that. So it's it's a change. It's a change where you don't have main battery reload. I can't spam out on a target and get a really great situation that I could either AP broadside him or kill off a DD or you know farm some uh, fire damage on a target. That's just not really a play that's available. Um, and because of that, it, it informs your play in a different way. So, uh, obviously, 127 millimeter guns. There's an enemy DD here. He's trying to move between these two islands. I was trying to move forward. A typical play that I would normally do on McLeber back in the day, but they've nerfed the concealment. I can't assassinate him like I want to. But we did move close enough that he was actually spotted. Now, he never actually fires his guns, but we can still do pretty good damage with the high rate of fire. So he is spotted for a short time, and actually I think we set him on fire, so he was actually spotted for a longer time, but he uses damage control to drop on. Uh, but you'll notice that the gun range is pretty pathetic. 11.5 uh, is the maximum gun range by default, and if I have one thing to say, don't play this ship with the maximum gun range. Either equip the range module that's in slot 6, or advanced firing training. Uh, so in, in order to do that, obviously, for advanced firing training, you would have to drop a four point. Now, a lot of players, or uh, I guess a lot of examples of recent, uh, they will give up concealment in order to take advanced firing training. And, you know, advanced firing training is nice. It gives you gun range on small caliber, and it gives you flak burst damage. Uh, and the normal Kleber wouldn't, wouldn't really care too much about flak burst because you normally don't even have range for flak to exist, whereas the Marcel, one of the traits that you gain for giving up main battery reload is defensive AA and AA range. So if for all the things that you have to give up, uh, there are some nice features here that differentiate from the Kleber and give it a valid existence. Uh, it's not just a mirror image of the Kleber with one thing tweaked. Uh, it's a lot of different things tweaked on a platform that works very well. So, I would highly recommend a range mod, and for that, if you get the range mod, you can fire at targets 12, 13 kilometers away. On cooldown, and not worry too much. Uh, the 11.5 is just close enough that you can't openly fire without taking incoming fire, and it will probably be successful. So... That is absolutely my biggest critique of this. The base range is just not enough, and it shows. 
It shows in your decision making and, you know, I'm trying to make the Torps work as the primary way to play them, but it's just better to play for guns. Time and time again, it's always proven that your guns will do more consistent damage towards targets and this makes, this is no exception, this is exactly what you would expect. Uh, but clearly, I can't openly fire. So all of this dead time that is being wasted by me not firing, I could be firing with a better build. But I, you know, I like the Torps. I've always enjoyed the system. Uh, it's fun to be active and maneuver back and forth, which is always available. Uh, but if I had range, I could do that as well as send torpedoes at high traffic zones. You know, we have this enemy Minotaur who is trying to camp in smoke and fire on me on cooldown, but we're near our max range, especially near him, and it makes it harder for him to engage us. Now, I am actually pulling myself out of torpedo range rapidly, and I should have considered that before I made this play. So, just want to make sure you guys understand that, yeah, uh, it has guns, it doesn't have main battery, it has torpedoes, uh, they're all slightly different, uh, but, you know, you have to play to the strengths of the ship itself, and, yeah, you want to make the torpedoes work. They have pretty reasonable gun reload, but at the end of the day, it's guns. You are a Colbert. Your goal is a mini Colbert with no uh, Citadel. Now, your goal is to fire on cooldown, and if you can't do that, you need to adjust your build, and that's my biggest critique of this, is uh, the range is definitely suffering, and it shouldn't. It should be available the whole time, but I just, I didn't put enough emphasis on it. Uh, I put more emphasis on assassinations, and they're just kind of dead. Uh, French are, you can still assassinate, don't get me wrong, but it's so much harder to force the assassination. Like, I was moving away, and all of a sudden I was spotted. Didn't think that it was anything of note, but look at it! The enemy Shima opens up outside of his mag, uh, his base concealment, he does all the uh, strat for me. He, he, you know, he throws out my attempt to try and move in and I could very easily kill him off. Huge mistake by him, but we, uh, we could easily do that. He assisted in my ability to kill him. It was just a misplay by the Shima. And you'll notice that, you know, the damage is pretty good. Uh, you just need to be able to fire, and fire from a range that is actually safe, which we are not. <laughs> Definitely not at 11.5. So, enemy team has lost a lot. We've killed two enemies, one of them being a Shima on this flank, which is good. That means there's only two more DDs left in the game. But I need to try and make a play. Now, I have 50% of my life, and I wish I had more. Uh, you know, but the, the one thing I wish I had was range. It's the biggest disappointment of the whole thing. The base range just is inadequate. Uh, it's clear that they expect you to go range in another way. And after playing this, yeah, that's how it means to be. But the game itself is so competitive, I didn't want to pass it up. Because let's be real, guys. There's a lot of blowouts going down. And as much as it's enjoyable to watch a blowout, literally the video that I posted yesterday, it's also enjoyable to see you struggle. You know, find an opponent that understands how to engage you where you have probably a 50-50 chance. Uh, you know, this enemy Minotaur did a great job of firing on me in his smoke, not giving me a place that I could return fire. I didn't do a good job of moving forward so that I could actually torpedo him. And obviously that backfired. But his teammate, the Shima, threw all of that away by openly firing in a position where he couldn't possibly avoid it. And we were able to kill him in a blink of an eye. And that's just down to the high rate of fire in the guns, the speed of the ship itself to throw off incoming shells, and an over-eager player that doesn't understand or respect the equipment that's available here. Yes, main battery is not an option. But it's still more than adequate to kill opponent DDs. You have more than enough penetration, you still have a huge advantage against them, even without main battery. And, uh, you know, another target that we have a huge advantage against, the enemy Minotaur. 
It doesn't have a lot of armor, so the low gun caliber is okay. It's not a big deal, because uh, I can pretty much pin from any angle, and all I have to do is hit this guy, and with the high rate of fire, very easy to smoke fire. Yeah, whereas something like the Kleber, I wouldn't recommend smoke firing in the Kleber. The only time it would smoke fire is if you're about to kill the target. You know, a DD just pops smoke and he's hiding from you, and you're right at the end of your main battery reload, or you're right at the beginning, and you're just desperately trying to get something on the target. That's when I would say, Kleber, yes, smoke fire. Uh, the Marceau, it's definitely an option always because of the rate of fire. Now, this enemy Minotaur. Unfortunately, I'm spotted by the Des Moines, but I do get close enough to the Minotaur that when he fires, he detects uh, with the bloom of the guns. So I'm just going to switch to AP and see how well they work. Noting that these are 127, these don't have the same pen. Clearly, you can see the shells are going right where the Citadel is. And oh, now we're getting where we need to be. He barely showed too much side so we could pin. But with slight angling, you could see those AP shells, they couldn't get to the Citadel. Uh, that's one of the downsides of the gun caliber, but it's also a plus. Because of the rate of fire is so quick, I can easily switch between AP or HE, and in that situation, AP worked out just fine. We got five Citadels very quickly. Uh, so now we're going to capture the base, and there's an enemy Des Moines that is somewhere north of this area. And yep, of course, he's within 10 kilometers. One of the reasons why I have relocation is for this very situation. I don't want to be surprised. I want to have a general idea of where I need to point my guns. Uh, there are strats and builds that drop radio location or drop concealment and go advanced firing and demo and all that stuff. IFHE. Um, the gun is so small and the fire chance so minimal that going IFHE, yes, you'll gain more pin, but it's not going to be enough pin to deal with, you know, battleships, 32 millimeters of pin. You're going to have to deal with the fact that, you know, you're losing fire chance, and, you know, fire chance being lost is not in your best interest. So, for me, this is really the best thing I could do, save full range. Having radio location so that I have a general idea of where the enemy is, I could harass them down. If there's not a Des Moines and maybe there's a DD here, I could rush towards him, force him to decide if he wants to reveal his location, and use the fact that I have Yamato as a backup. But since we have Yamato spotting for us, we can find a nice soft zone and just park ourselves and fire over it. And that's very easy in the Marcel. It, it's one of the best things about it that this is a Colbert on a Kleber chassis. You can just harass right outside of line of sight and continuously do that all around the map. Again, it's a lot easier when you have range and go range. <laughs> uh, but teammates take out the Des Moines, which is good. Enemy Wooster gets in the way. Uh, friendly Yamato dies to the Des Moines, his last gasp of fire. And this has been a great game, but I could have had so much more impact if I would have just gone a range build, gotten two more kilometers, and fired on cooldown, not caring that they could return fire. But 11.5, you can't do that. It's just a little too close to the target. So, uh, teammate firing on the Wooster, I decide to open up on him. I'm pretty low, he's pretty low, but. We're just inside of being able to hit him as he's moving away. And, you know, we have great speed, so he can't get away from us. And we can just constantly harass him and shadow him, and I like that. And also, you know, it's a different way of playing without main battery. Uh, but one thing that's nice about it is I don't have to invest a consumable charge into, you know, normal play. I get the rate of fire built in, uh, but I also get defensive AA. And uh, in a CV game, you would definitely notice the impact that the defensive AA and the range of the AA offers compared to the Kleber. Um, and uh, it's on you uh, whether you want to start the tempo and keep your guns, your AA guns on, or you can turn them off. You, you have the same exact concealment, but you have greater AA range. Now, friendly Yoshino, 
takes out the Wooster. We unfortunately bump right into the Yoshino at the worst possible time. The Yamato hits him right on the nose. We absorb some of the shots. The friendly absorb some of the shots. And uh, once again, I would love to openly fire on this man, but I can't. I don't have the range. I'm too close. He can easily fire on me and kill me. So the next best thing is to try and get the torps in range. Well, you get the torps in range and they don't really have enough speed. So it's like a catch-22 with this particular build. Whereas if I would have just gone range, I could have gunned this guy down and he, he could do nothing against me. And there's a chance that we'll lose. You know, there's a chance that the Oshino's gonna die. So I figure, you know what? We need to do some damage on this guy. And we're just gonna open up and hope that he doesn't wanna engage us. That's about all we can do. We're close enough that his secondaries can even fire on us, which is hilarious. Uh, just, it would have just been so much better if the range was selected. Don't make the same mistakes that I make in this game. Get a range skill or mon and openly fire at max range. Man, you can do tons of damage. I uh, probably could have doubled the amount of damage I did this game. Uh, you know, we've just ended up relying on our team to make a play and that's great and all but isn't it better if you just do it yourself and that's kind of the thing here is like gun range opens that up as a possible play whereas the base range doesn't so teammates doing a good job he set him on fire uh we're just working this guy down i don't know if he's gonna die the fire he actually dies to us and the uh, rate of fire and the oshino is healthy and still alive so it looks like we're going to end up winning this game, and he actually tried to kill us. Nice try. Uh, but, you know, the guns work very well. Uh, I would, you know, my critique is only surrounded by the base range of the guns. It's just not adequate enough. It's, it's so clear that they want you to invest in range and expect you to, to the point where it's kind of over-nerfed. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the Kabarosk where the rudder is, I think, like eight, three seconds or something like that base because they expect you to take double rudder. And if you don't take double rudder, then you're giving up on DD levels of maneuverability. So other than the range, it's a nice working ship. It does things that the Kleber doesn't. You know, some people might want the AA power for whatever situation may bring. Um, but, you know, overall, it, it's nice and different. Uh, it's doing something similar yet different. I uh, don't currently know the currency or how it's going to be obtained. I assume, just based on the traits, it's got to be similar to Colbert. Maybe a research bureau ship. You know, maybe coal. Uh, something like that. Uh, but this game ended up taking it as a victory. And in spite of the bad build, we still did a great job. I think we did 110,000 damage, got a couple kills. Man, that Shima open firing, that was that was a great benefit for us. Uh, Torpedo got one or two stray torps. Could definitely improve on that as well. But, you know, it works out very well. Good speed for objective play. Uh, once you work people down, then you can really dominate. Almost 2,500 base XP. Just go range, guys, so you can do even more damage. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads. You could also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily World Ocean videos, first impression, how-to, news, and review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.